welcome to our Saints Media Lab Newsreel magazine for the second term in 2019. We we'll hope you enjoy our reporting about many of this term's events, and in case you would like to comment or make a suggestion, just email saintsmedialab at gmail.com. Now to our first newsreel of the term. The old sporting rivalry between St. John's and St. George's College at Harare seemed to have started as soon as St. John's had their first form intake in the middle of the 80s. Then in 1990 came the first time the rugby first teams clashed. At that time it was a one-sided affair with St. George's winning 20-3. But for the last 30 years, it has been developed into a much more competitive and very popular event, which includes most of the team sports that are played in the winter term. On Saturday, the 18th of May, the highly anticipated games between St. George's and St. John's College occurred. This is one of the biggest sporting and social events in Harare. You could see many old boys from both schools intertwined with a large crowd of people gathering on the St. John's fields. St. George's College was fired up from Friday's tight loss in the first team hockey game, where we went down by one goal to zero. So, the first team football vowed to make up for this and was passionately supported by their fans. The team did not disappoint and managed to set up their star striker Ryan Elliam three times, so he got a second hat trick of the season. The crowd got really excited early in the day and the game ended 3 1 for Saints. Then, in the afternoon, the crowd swelled even more as it was time for the traditional first team rugby game. After the usual rituals, the game started with energy and passion. Pushed forward by an excited crowd, the St. George's team slowly got the upper hand. But in the end, St. George's managed to come out with a winning score of 38-29. That was a great day and St. John's proved again what a worthy rival they are for our sports teams. So the second term began on a really high note for our sports teams. And we know that there is more to come. When the Makwabarara family in 2013 started the Hammer and Tongues Invitational Under-20 Football Tournament at St. George's College, little did we know that it would grow into one of the biggest national youth football tournaments with participants from trust, mission and government schools. This year, even the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education, Professor Paul Mavima, came to visit the St. George's sports grounds for this event and our football first team was eager to play against the best teams in the country. 25 football first teams from all across the country competed on the weekend of the 24th of May in the Hammer and Tongues Invitational. This has become one of the most important events on the national youth football calendar and even celebrities like Charles Mabika got involved. There was quite a lot of media attention throughout the tournament and most of the games were streamed online. Our St. George's first team started well. Their counter-attacking tactics were implemented with great effect, and they went straight through to the quarter-final. Here they lost to a stubborn Missouri high school team on penalties. And the final saw an intense game between Peter House and St. Ignatius. The St. Ignatius goalkeeper saved several good chances and then became the hero and player of the tournament when he saved the decisive penalty for St. Ignatius College. One can clearly see how helpful such sponsorship is to advance sport at the college. And sport at St. George's has developed some great athletes. This term saw a visit by a former St. George's student who has become one of the world's best triple jumpers and who was enjoying a study leave at home in Zimbabwe from his Texas University. Well, my name is Chengetama Paya. I was a St. George's student since Form 1 up to Upper 6 and I'm a triple jumper. St. George's has brought me like, it's been a family here. So everything I do, I just want to represent St. George's College. Recently I jumped 17 meters, 13 which qualified me for the World Senior Championships in Doha. And that puts me number 12 in the world right now. When I was looking for scholarships, I was jumping 15 meters 65, and most schools didn't really want me. But TCU told me that they would make me improve and jump 16 meters. Then that was, that was in lower six. Then I jumped 60 meters 30 in upper six. Then all the schools wanted me. But I decided to go to TC because they wanted me when I wasn't really good. Just being from a Christian background and a Jesuit school, I've learned that everything I do, God has to be in it. The main thing that has been pushing me forward, whenever I feel down, I just pray. Chengatai Mapa is now very close in qualifying for the 2020 Olympic Games, and we wish him the best in that endeavor. 
And so I stand for competition for music in first term. The second term sees another National Institute of Allied Arts Festival, the speech and drama competition. And for a long time, St. George has sent some of the very competent entries to compete. This year was no different. The National Institute for Allied Arts held its speech and drama competition in the middle of this term with the venue in the Prince Edward School Beto. St. George's College students were well prepared by drama teacher Kayla Render and scored big. Eight honors grades were achieved by the following students. Shingai Musasiwa, Kudzai Shebikwa, Rukudzo Shinaki, and Kushchoan, Kuziwa Shokuomba, Dumiso Johnson Brickyo, Bongeni Maseko, Chinodiwa Mchkambizi, Chikomborero Mapenza Oswa, and Jablani Mupausi. I have to be in both at once. And why should the mortals among us feast as they please? Well, I. The son of Maya, the grandson of Atlas, wait upon them hand and foot. It's great to see the drama department making the school proud with their achievements. But of course, school life at St. George's is not about sports and cultural activities only, but centers on a busy academic schedule. And the second term is one of the first highlights of the year for this academic program, the mock exams. Our next newsreel looks at this yearly exercise. Uh, currently, the whole school is busy with examinations, media examinations, and mock examinations are given to from fours, lower sixes, and upper sixes. Once the examinations are set, the departments uh, pack those examinations, take them to bookstore, where they're kept securely. Then after that, the papers are dispatched to invigilators on exam day. And when they've been written by candidates, they're then given back to uh, the departments to mark. At the moment, our candidates are still finishing syllabuses. Uh, they still have sport to attend in the afternoons. Although generally, mock examinations will give you an idea where they will be if they're given enough time to revise. So towards the final examinations, they get study leave and they prepare more thoroughly for these examinations. Hence for uh, the final examinations, you get a higher percentage pass rate than the mock examinations. We wish all the candidates in the third term exams the best of luck and the results that they wish for. Students at St. George's excel in various fields and our music department is no exception. Every year sees a leading choir member appointed choir captain. And this year's Abishai Murera is really a very skillful musician. Most of us know him as the amazing drummer who fires up our sports team's supporters. But there's more to him than that. Uh, my name is Abishai Murera. I am an upper six student at St. George's College. I am the choir captain of St. George's College. It was in 2014 when my father decided to get me my first drum set. Now I can play seven instruments, let me say, professionally. Whenever I'm feeling, maybe let's say it's stress from schoolwork or anything that it may be, I can easily get over anything that I'm going through through that music. Recently, at the I Steadfords, I managed to win two awards, and one of them was for being the best male vocal singer between the age of 18 to 20 and for being the most um, promising musician. Hopefully after school, I actually want to do agribusiness. Um, with the university I'm going to, hopefully in Manitoba, they offered me to do music on the side as well. So hopefully when I'm done with school, I want to continue with music because I really love music. With the abundance of talent in our music department, this year it was even decided that for the first time we have a choir captain plus a music captain. And we will bring you a portrait of the music captain at a later stage. The annual art exhibition by the St. George's Art Department has always been an interesting event. This year there is a new flair to the main display of our art students' work as it is given an open air space. St. George's annual art exhibition has for the first time moved from the school's Loyola Hall to the Arts Quad, an open space square right at the school's art studios. A wide and interesting selection of artworks by students from all age groups was on display. For the senior students, 
there was some impressive artwork from last year exhibited, as much of this year's work is currently kept safe to be used soon for the upcoming Cambridge exams. The work of the junior students, which can be found on the other side of the exhibition, is actually current work and shows exactly where the students are right now in the development of their artistic skills. Head of the Art Department, Ms. Murombezi, plans to establish the Art Squad as a regular outdoor exhibition and studio space for various uses in the Arts Department. As you can see, we are ready to give you reports on such events and new developments at our school and are happy to continue next term and hope you will continue to watch our news productions.